Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. I'm back here at Ed Morse Mazda in Port Ritchie, Florida, because guess what? We have it. This is the all new for 2020 Mazda CX-30. Let's talk a little bit about Mazda history before we get into this all new compact SUV. Mazda has been around, believe it or not, as a company since 1927. The first thing they made was cork, of all things. Eventually, in the 30s, they would make their first vehicle. It was called the Mazda Go, three-wheeled vehicle. Decades have gone by. They really built a reputation, a name for themselves with their Mazda rotary engines. But things have changed since then, and especially in the 21st century, SUVs are really where people are gravitating to. And what Mazda has done is successfully filled a hole in their lineup for a compact SUV with this CX-30. Now, if you're wondering, why do they call it the CX-30? Why not the CX-4? Because there's a CX-3, there's a CX-5, CX-9, there used to be a CX-7. Where does the CX-30 come from? Well, guess what? The CX-4 name was already taken. That vehicle is being sold in China already, and they felt that there would be some confusion so they decided to call it the CX-30. Now, the interesting thing is, is that the CX-30 sits on the Mazda 3 chassis. That's gonna allow you to have a little bit more room, a little bit more better ride quality than the smaller CX-3. But why don't we go ahead, let's dive into the CX-30. This one, though, has the preferred package added. So it's gonna have some extra niceties that the base one does not have. So right off the bat, the first thing I immediately love about the CX-30 is it looks like a Mazda. I love what they do with their design and their lines. Everything is almost like nicely hand molded and there's really no sharp edges or straight edges on the vehicle. Very slim and trim on that headlight housing just like many of their other models. Full LED, I love the chrome trim, really accentuates the lines of the CX-30. We drop down and guess what? No fake vents. This is what I'm talking about. You don't have to put a bunch of garnish all over the place. It's like ordering a plate of food and then they put a big old tree right on, on your plate as a garnish. Like why? Nice and smooth. You have some LED lighting. Look how slim and trim that is. It's almost like a, it's almost like a nail file. That's how trim it is and slim. Flat black all the way across this bottom section. And as we drift to the center, look at the flow. So you have the chrome drops in it's almost like a half pipe when I used to skateboard when I was a kid. Drops into this half pipe and comes back up to the other side. Gloss black on the grill. We come down and you have full fl flat black. And I look at, I like how large this opening is down here for the radiator. Just really sleek. Even the way the hood slopes down into the front fascia, really nice design. But now when we go up under the hood, they take the body lines from the front fascia and just bring it all the way back towards the window and then it kind of fades away. I like that. It's, it's nice and sharp without being too over the top. Now when we come around the bend, one thing that I'm still not 100% sold on, it's actually sitting a little bit better with me with this particular preferred trim, is this flat black. Uh, it's a little thick. Now I'm going to say the reason why they did that is as a cost cutting feature because remember this is just plastic doesn't have to be painted that saves on paint costs um, but definitely on this particular one with a little larger wheel it's a little bit more appealing to the eye now when we talk about the wheel on the preferred setting so the one that we already featured on Rady's Rise was a base with a 16 inch wheel this is an 18 inch wheel love the finish on it nice bright silver goes perfect with the blue you have that iconic Mazda logo remember Mazda was the first Japanese car company to win the coveted 24 Hours of Le Mans. First, first Japanese car company. This is a 215 tire width-wise and then a 55 series sidewall that's going to give you a nicer ride than, say, a 40 series sidewall, which would be lower. But the design of the wheel with the color, perfect. And I think it's, it's making this flat black not look so thick and heavy. Now, as we go down that fender, you can see the body line just kind of disappears. We have the beautiful blue on the mirror caps. Look at what, what Mazda is doing with their lighting. It's so slim. It's almost like it's not even there. So you have your turn signals in there, some chrome just along the bottom. And I like the way it kind of kicks up towards the rear quarter window. You can see the height of this Mazda CX-30. I'm six feet tall. There's your roof line. Nice curved 
uh, belt line here, and then the lower uh, panel that starts with the fender, you can see the height of it. It actually kind of flares out towards the back here. Now, as we come towards the rear, everything is nice and kind of just molded and rolled it over. And then when we get to the back of the CX-30, this is probably one of my favorite parts, just like the front. I love the taillight design. Just the thought about taking the body, the rear quarter, and then having that housing actually stick out. You know, a lot of other SUVs, a lot of other vehicles, they tend to kind of put that housing and then just make it all one piece look to it. I like the way it extends out, all LED lighting, really, really clear. And then as we drop down, you got your CX-30 badge, and then it's nice to see two actual fun functioning exhausts. These are functioning exhaust where it seems like so many auto manufacturers are just putting fake things. And then you have a, a simple looking diffuser. No fake grates back here or vents or any of that junk. Nice and clean from one end to the other. Why don't we pop the hood and see what's powering the CX-30. All right guys, we got the hood popped on this deep blue crystal CX-30. We are gonna zonk that prop rod. I know some people are telling me to stop zonking the prop rod, but we're gonna do it here on Radies Rides. Under the hood is that tried and true you don't have to worry about tons of engine options or anything. It's a 2.5 liter inline four naturally aspirated engine, 186 horsepower, 186 pound feet of torque. You can get all wheel drive optional on the CX-30. The best news of the day is gonna be, guess what? It's made it to a six speed automatic transmission. There's no CVT in this Mazda. MPGs, great return 25 in the city 33 in the highway your front wheel drive um, cx30 weighs 3232 pounds and if you wanted to drag race somebody you're looking at 0 to 60 and 7.5 seconds the one thing i always notice every time i pop the hood whether it's a mazda 3 the cx30 there's plenty of room back there for a small little snail called a turbocharger and that's what i'm hoping i'm hoping that mazda will go back to that performance that real performance throw a turbocharger on this thing give it some more performance with suspension and whatnot i think it'd be a pretty cool vehicle also do that to the mazda 3 of course here i'll give you a name for it the mazda speed 3 and the mazda speed cx30 speaking of speed why don't we fire this up and hear what the zoom zoom is all about All right, guys, we're inside the brand new CX-30. This one, like I said, has the preferred package. It's a higher trim than the first one that we featured here at Ed Morse Mazda. I know you're probably at that point. You're like, Joe, all right, we heard the price on that other one, which I'll put the link at the end of this video if you didn't see that first one. What's the price on this one? MSRP, $27,000. Let's see what you get for the money. Now, I love what, what Mazda's doing because they are bringing a premium touch, a premium brand within their own brand. Look at all that nice leather material. I like the white contrast stitching. This one has the optional Bose sound system. Look at the design. Even at that top portion of the door panel, the way it extends out, and if you'll notice, it's actually black and blue leather material. Something different, something fun, something that, hey, gives you some idea that they gave thought into it now as you go from the door panel to the dash everything's soft material wonderful soft material look at that stitch work this is where that upper portion kind of integrates right into the dash you have some shiny chrome along the bottom of the ac vents and then smack dab right at a perfect visual standpoint is an 8.8 .8 inch infotainment screen now I'm gonna zonk it because one thing that's terrible is that the screen does not fill up this whole space. I wish that it actually filled up the whole space. It'd probably be more like a over 10 inch screen like you find on a lot of other brands. You cannot touch it. Well, you can touch it, but as you can see, it doesn't do anything. You have to use the rotary dial to go through that information. I'll show you that in a second. I like the design of the AC vents. Here's your start stop button with the little bit of the silver trim around the AC controls. It's dual climbing, obviously. You can see it clear as day. You have heated seats, no ventilated seats, a nice cubby down here for some peanut M&Ms or just regular M&Ms. Or how about those 
peanut butter stuffed M&Ms. Those sound yummy right about now. Two cup holders. You have your, it looks like a Zippo lighter, um, key fob. It's tasteful, it's light, it's just a little bit on the big side, but you know what? I've seen worse. We've seen worse here on Ready's Rise from other brands. This is gonna be controlling that eight speed, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna say eight speed, six speed automatic transmission. Technically, it's an eight speed minus two. So it's a six speed automatic transmission. Leather on the shift knob, I like the silver. The boot is looking good. Now, what's interesting is that you may think that this looks like regular, just gloss black. It actually has a design in it. Uh, sort of looks carbon fiber-ish. Let's see how the fingerprints go. Uh, it actually doesn't show the fingerprints as bad as you would think. Look at the extra work that they're doing. See what they're doing here at Mazda? They're putting that nice leather trim all the way down with the stitch work. This is gonna control that direct drive rotary up here. You spin the knob and you could go through your different options. So you have information, entertainment, communication, navigation, settings, whatever you want, you just click on it. So you push down and then you could go into all your different settings there to um, you know, set it up exactly the way you want it as you're driving. Very easy to use, very intuitive. I just wish that it was a little bit larger since the whole screen is larger. And don't worry, it doesn't look like an afterthought. They actually sunk it down, very, very tasteful. Soft as a baby's butt with this armrest. The stitch work is great. We slide it, you could actually slide it back, put some, some treats here like a bag of Lay's. You got a 12 volt here, a USB, or you lift it up. Somebody decided to uh, skimp on the PDI and they put all the plastic in there. You have some felt lining on the bottom, so if you wanna put some bananas in here, you won't scratch the bottom portion of your banana. Top portion, I can't promise anything. That goes back down. If you wanna slide it back, look at that, nice. And then the seats, all leather, very soft. Love the stitch work, really nice material. And that's what I really have found with Mazda seats overall, is that they're great for long trips. Awesome. No sunroof, but you do have a light headliner in here, which is great because it kind of opens everything up, makes it a little brighter. But why don't you get on behind the wheel? I wanna show you behind what's going on with this new CX-30. All right, guys, business end. Here's your electric assist for the driver's side, eight-way positionable. It's actually pretty good. Uh, you even have that nice lower lumbar, which is really nice. Steering wheel, pretty good thickness. You have some wonderful stitch work. The leather is nice and soft, and it gives a good grip at the 10 and 2 notches. I like the way they've kind of thin everything out. So you have slim controls on both sides, even slim in the center here, kind of opens up that whole area. And it's a good thing because look at that beautiful dash. I love the analog tack, the, the uh, coolant gauge, and the fuel gauge. What's awesome is, is that that speedometer is not analog. It's actually digital. It looks beautiful. You could toggle through in the center. Look at all the information. There's your lane keep assist. Of course, this comes with all of that wonderful eye sensing technology from Mazda. Really clear graphic. Overall, I feel super comfortable in here. Plenty of headroom, and remember, I'm six feet tall. Let's check out the back seat and see how your passengers are gonna be loving the CX-30. All right, guys, back seat time in the CX-30. Um, the door opening is a little tight, but once you get in, once again, plenty of headroom, plenty of shoulder room. Go sit in a CX-3 and then get into one of these, and I'm telling you right now, you're gonna feel a big difference. Now, I think it's so smart. First of all, I like the way it's leather all the way around. I think it's so smart the way they notch out the back for extra knee and leg room. You do have two uh, rear AC vents. What's going on here? Zonk in this whole lower area. I need a 12 volt, I need a USB. This is a $27,000 vehicle. It's the 21st century, 2020. Where's the USB? Where's at least a 12 volt so I could go get an adapter. So that to me is a big missed opportunity. You can see the extra cut now. If you're lucky enough to be sitting on the right-hand side of the vehicle, you get a pocket for your snacks, for your iPad, for books, an abacus. Uh, maybe you just got a back scratcher you just want to stick in there. The person behind the driver, too bad, so sad. You wish you sat over here. Shotgun for the back seat. Flip that down, just as soft as up front. Two cup holders. Let's go check out the cargo area because I know you want to see what kind of space we got back there. All right, guys, that rear cargo area, we're gonna push the button. You're gonna have to use your muscles. It's okay, it's not heavy. Nice amount of space. This is what I'm talking about. Those people who went out and bought a CX-3, they actually have less cargo space than somebody who drives a Mazda 3. 
Now that, that C, the CX-30 is on the same chassis, you're gonna get the same great space as a Mazda 3, and that's even with the seats up. Now, what's nice is you just push the top button here, flops right down, one, two, three. We don't need a song and a dance. Look at that. Plenty of room for whatever you need. Go get that big screen TV because if you look on the CX-30, the opening is actually a nice width to it and height. But while we get to the best part, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's take this CX-30 for a spin. All right, guys, we pulled out of Ed Morse Mazda. We're in the CX-30. I could tell right away that I'm liking this particular one even more than the first one that we did a full review on, just because with the preferred package, you're getting that leather interior, which really makes the inside that much nicer. Uh, visibility out the front is great. We're gonna go through this little mini uh, lake. Pull on out, super smooth. The transmission, I, like I said, I really love that they have a six speed. Another thing that I forgot to point out is that there is a switch to the left of the transmission, to the shifter, uh, where you put the vehicle in sport mode. By simply pressing up, it actually changes the way that the transmission and the engine cooperate with one another to give you a little bit more sporty feel, quicker acceleration, um, those types of experiences in sport mode. And 90% of the time, I know uh, when I'm driving my wife's Mazda 3, I just leave it in sport mode no matter where I'm driving or how I'm driving, because it just, overall, it makes the experience um, a little bit more engaging, so to speak. When you get on the throttle, it gets up and goes right away. But brake pedal feedback is great, super smooth. I think the best part is the visibility because you would think with it being a uh, compact SUV, the, the visibility would not be wonderful. Out the front, it's amazing. Even out the back, it looks great. Side windows. It's interesting because the door, the top of the door panel comes up on a little on the higher side, but you still get great visibility even with the attractive looking mirrors, which is nice as well. Right, guys, let me do a little acceleration test in the CX-30. It's a little damp out. Uh, I wanna see how the traction is gonna work here on throttle. A little bit of spin, but hey, nothing too crazy. Gets the power down. And like I said, you're looking at zero to 60 in that seven second range. Not the fastest, but also definitely not the slowest. That's for sure. Steering has a nice feel to it. And that's one thing I've liked about all Mazdas is just the way that they drive. Even though this is not a, a Mazda Speed 3 or a Mazda Miata, it still has really great feedback coming to the steering wheel. And I think one of my favorite parts of the interior is I really like this two-tone color going on with the blue and the black. Really fits the car very nicely. And it almost feels like Lexus or Infinity-ish um, with the quality and you're not paying those higher premium brand prices, which is wonderful. If you go and take one of these for a test drive, give the infotainment system a little time. I think that at first you may not like the screen, um, the way that it, it's located, but give it some time, it, it almost disappears. That's how well placed it is, especially a little bit lower in the dash, but driving down, the, the wind noise is not too bad. I know we had some questions in some of the other videos. And this one seems to have a little less wind noise than the one that I drove, the base one that I drove, that I'll put that link at the end of the video. So some of you were asking, how's the wind noise in that first one? It wasn't wonderful um, with, the, with the amount of wind noise that was coming. This one is, it seems much better. All right, guys, let me go ahead and get on it a little bit. A little drier over here, good traction. I'm gonna go in this left-hand bend on the brakes. Good pedal feedback, turning, not a lot of body roll. That's what's really wonderful about this thing is that even though this is not a um, sport version, a sports car version of an SUV, it, it actually remained very, very flat uh, going into that uh, left-hand turn there, which I really think is what helps with the overall feel of the driving experience of this CX-30. I think for many people, the acceleration is going to be just fine. I think it has plenty of pep um, for what you're paying and, and what the purpose of this vehicle is. But I'm telling you, visibility is really wonderful in here. 
um, and I'm liking it a lot. All right, guys, I wanna see how this thing transitions from one direction to the other on throttle, on the brakes. I'm telling you, it communicates well and it handles very well considering the layout of this vehicle. Uh, as you can see, driving, seats are supportive, I feel good behind the wheel, the wind noise is at a minimum, and it has a nice ride quality to it. So I think that this is gonna fit many different uh, lifestyles, many different needs or necessities for a particular vehicle. I think the CX-30 kind of falls into that sweet spot. But we're gonna go ahead, hopefully this gave you um, a nice overall feel of the CX-30. We're gonna go ahead and get back to Ed Morse Mazda, so I will see you in a split second. All right, guys, another wonderful time here at Ed Morse Mazda. What can we say, we say about the CX-30? I think that it is a very smart move by Mazda to have this vehicle. You know, some people are not ready to go onto a CX-5. Some people don't need a CX-9. And that, like I said, that CX-3 was a little bit lacking. With this CX-30, I think it's gonna be right in the sweet spot for many people to go up against the competition from all the different auto manufacturers. But if it's SUVs like this, these compact SUVs, all new for 2020, you wanna keep seeing on the channel, leave a comment in the comment section. If you are new and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rise family. If you wanna help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description, get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Gotta give it up to Big Guns McGee, Tom Moshner, He's liking the CX-30. He's thinking about how much protein he could put in the back. Thank you, Tom, for all your hard work. And just like always, I'll see you on the next ride.